You want to talk about loss? You want to talk about losing? You want to talk about losing things? On my way home from work yesterday, I bought a lottery ticket. A scratch-off, one of those instant lottery tickets, and I scratched it off, and you know what I won? Nothing. Not a free ticket, not a dime, not a red cent. So what do you think I did? Yeah, I bought another lottery ticket, another scratch-off, and I scratched it off, and you know what I won? Nothing, not a zip goose egg, much less a free ticket, or a dime, or a red cent. You want to talk about loss, you want to talk about losing, you want to talk about losing things, you want to talk about being a loser. I bought two scratch-off lottery tickets at one dollar a pop on my way home every day for as long as I can remember. And I have never won anything. I had a friend who was a great reader, but really, really neurotic about the condition of his books. Every time he would finish one, he would immediately replace it with a new and pristine but otherwise identical copy that would then be the one to sit on his shelves until doomsday. I says to him, God forbid you want to read one again if it's gone out of print. He shrugs, which I don't take as any kind of response. And I says, do you ever wonder what happens to those ever so slightly worn copies that you sell or give away or... What do you do with them anyway? He says, I know perfectly well what happens to them. They haunt me. We are given, to take or leave as we will, the possibly incorrect idea that the cathedral is the defining structure of all Western architecture for the last half millennium. This is where I work. This is the aisle. These are the wings. Locked. Locked. There's that fucking toilet again. I stopped wearing gloves after about four years at this job when I realized I wasn't getting colds anymore. I started wearing them again the day after the bosses gave me this hallway. Not long after that, I noticed I was taking as few bowel movements as I could on my own time. I wasn't even thinking about it. When you're in my position, you have to work to keep your brain working. Keep it from just shutting down, atrophying, making your head spontaneously detach from your body and crawl off into a dark corner somewhere to die. You have to think. But you can't think about this. You can't think about the pretty women and not-so-pretty women who sat their pretty and not-so-pretty asses here and left their least prettiness by far. Like a confession. Like an abortion. Like something they should have aborted but didn't. You can't think... Maybe she was just having one of those heavy flow days. You can't wonder if this was just one person, can you? Maybe she was cutting herself. Remember how she used to like cutting herself? Glassy-eyed, admiring the wounds for hours afterward. Remember how you used to like cutting herself? Yourself. Cutting yourself. Remember that? Don't. But I can't think about it. So I don't. And then I go to lunch. Jonathan Swift wrote a poem called The Lady's Dressing Room, detailing a young gentleman's misfortunate examination of the contents of a lady's boudoir. He becomes so acutely aware of the reality of her bodily functions that he can never look at her again, or any other woman for that matter, without thinking, quote, Celia shits, end quote. Another romance blighted by the ugly truth of biological necessity. I guess sooner or later, we're all just collateral damage in humanity's war on its own awful. Oh, Jesus, I'm gonna contract Kaora.
had this friend. The worst thing in the world, right? The worst thing that does not involve actual physical discomfort, the worst irritation, is having the wrong damn song stuck in your head, right? I had this friend who told me once that he had had the same song stuck in his head for five straight years. I says to him, is it there now? He says, yes. I says, what is it? He says, nah, you'll laugh. I says, come on, I won't laugh. He says, okay, it's the Scooby-Doo theme. So I laughed a bit. I tried not to. He doesn't really frown. He just changes the subject. To this day. So help me, I don't know if he was bullshitting me or not. Just seeing a thing like that. I don't ask a lot from the world. I ask almost nothing, really. Before I die, I just want to... blank. Everybody has a list somewhere at the back of his mind of things he wants for himself before he dies. Mine is one item long. Before I die, I just want to not experience reverse peristalsis. Look it up. I want to get what will be on your list, too. I had a friend worked at a McDonald's for a month. He wouldn't eat fast food for a year afterward. I had a friend worked at a McDonald's for a year. He was never afraid to eat anything again as long as he lived. Of course, he's no longer with us. I don't ask a lot from the world. I ask almost nothing, really. Wait a second. Did this already happen again? It's Monday, isn't it? Did I come in yesterday? Or did I come in on my day off and not even realize it? Is today my day off? Whatever. Of course it already happened. It already is, always has, ever, and will ever have happened is the thing. Because I come in, and there's that fucking toilet and everything they've done to it. And here's this door. Still locked. And here's this door. Still also locked. And here she is. 
Right on cue. Bursting with all the goodness a growing body needs post-use food and soda cans and tampons and cigarette butts and toys and jewelry and small animals and a stench that could stun a charging wino and everything else that can prevent gravity from having its way with water and everything that we aren't taught in grade school to think that women's bodies are capable of producing and everything you can stuff into a hole that's too tight to fit and every day I clean it! Me! And then I go to lunch! And then I come back from lunch and do it all again like I never did it before and later I'll go home and I'd shit myself if I could but I haven't in weeks so I'll just eat and piss and shower for an hour and a half and sleep and come in again tomorrow, constant as the sunrise, constant as the northern star, constant as my weekly paper. <laughs> And now that my day is done, I've got the lotto to play. They say the definition of stupidity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I say the definition of a fugue state is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the same results. I had this friend. Nah, he'd never believe me. Of course I have friends. I'd see them more often if they didn't all have email. relationship is perfect, honey. Huh? <laughs> 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 
Just wanna get in the sun again 